you you like Adriana, but I know that you love Asante Kotokomo. Yeah, I love both clubs, and it was uh, a great game, although the pitch was a bit rusty, as we all know. <laughs> the Ghana pitches are like that, but the game was good. I think it gives you an impression of the Ghana League. We'll be talking about you very soon, yeah. but what? Or how would you rate the level you saw on the day? I think the quality is there. The quality is there. Uh, what left is the pitches now, and the referees are doing well. Uh, the referee who handled that game. I congratulate him after the game, and he was wonderful that day. Uh, zero zero was true reflection of the game. I see. Now let's talk about you. The Blasters court came a few weeks ago. Yeah. They played Ethiopia in that Afghan qualifying Kumase. Somehow you were not in the squad. Were you disappointed? Did you know? Were you surprised? No, I wasn't disappointed. I have been in the national team, I think, nine years now, and if could have decided to give someone an opportunity for state games. It's very important we all support the team to, to get what they, they, we all needed. And the young chaps they came, who came in, they did really well. Five comfortable wins like this, I think it's, it's good. We all have to support. And at times in a game, you need challenges in, in, in the national team. So uh, giving another people a chance is not something which I'm worried with. Were you surprised that your name wasn't among the list when it was released? Um, I wasn't too surprised. Uh, I wasn't too surprised because that is the national team and all the players deserve to be there. And you have like five million players in Ghana, so if someone got the opportunity, I have to take it in good faith, support the team, then we move on from there. You spoke about giving it a challenge or seeing it as a challenge when other people get the opportunity. Um, to what extent has this challenged you? Uh, it means a lot that I have to do well. I've, although I've been playing for my club, uh, I've been with the national team, I did what I have to do for my club. But it means I the team play a game and win like 5-0. That means when you get a chance again, you have to just grab it. So I, was, I always need challenges in my life. And the opportunity is open for men again, and I have to grab it as well. Do you think that most of the players that were not called will sit back and think that, okay, we just have to step up our game? Yeah, 100% sure. That it. Is it because the players that had the opportunity excelled, or because maybe an invitation was not extended to you? The SL, uh, winning 5-0 against Ethiopia is not uh, a bad score line. Although in every game, we. Uh, we need rooms for improvement, and whenever we are called back, we will come and we all work together for the nation. Did you watch the game? I watched the second half because I went to church. My, my friend was doing the wedding, but I watched the second half. What, what, what did you take out of the game, your impression? The, my impression about the game, uh, I think most of the players have played with more than five or six years, so I don't want to talk about them, but the new players, the new players came really. In, at the likes of Achampon, the guy who played the left back, uh, Benezo Ofori. Lomo. Lomo. Ofori. It was, it was, Ofori then there was had been with us for quite a year now because he went to the African Cup with us. Except that he never had opportunity of playing. But at training, I saw him. I, I, I know the qualities of that guy. So I wasn't surprised when he had a wonderful game. And that goal? Wonderful strike from him. I wasn't surprised because he had been scoring set goals at his club level. And the young chap who came in playing the... I think left side of the uh, attacking Lumo. midfield. No, uh, Ajapon. Ajapon. It was wonderful that day. I hope they will continue like this because this is the first game. They shouldn't be so headed Just concentrate and, and, and do the nation proud. How easy do you think that maybe if you got a chance and you grabbed it, you, it could make you complacent? How is it, is it, is it for anyone to be complacent? At times, it, uh, complacency comes in. Why? You'll be walking around and people will be cheering you up and down. Maybe if it doesn't take care, you'll be a bit complacent. So I'm just telling them there should be complacency. Uh, just just for one game. We have friendly games, two friendly games, which is very important. They should all go do well and make the team very strong and the challenges will come in and that is where it is important for the nation. Do you think the introduction of these boys have brought a lot of competition in terms of uh, locking down a place or position in the team? I think it will be headache for the coach because when you have great national team players like 
the ones we are having them blast us at times is a headache for the coaches but i know the question and, and how about the players in so terms you, in terms you of have to work very hard you have to work extra hard if you are doing like 90 percent then you have to add like 20 percent to it and to make the coach have a headache on on selection wise and that is what is important and you know the qualities of the coach as well now do you take a look at the results on the day and feel that it will be easy to qualify for the Nations Cup in a group that has Sierra Leone, has uh, Ethiopia and Kenya. I think football have changed a bit. Uh, no, no easy games as at now because you go into other countries, you will not get the pitch you want, and at times it can cost cost you a lot. But for what I have seen, I think we will qualify. Before we start talking about you, I would want us to talk a little bit about the World Cup. A lot of people say it's almost difficult. We almost cannot qualify. But if you are just joining us, this is Spotlight with me, Veronica Kome. This afternoon, my guest is Emmanuel Adman Badu, midfielder of the Black Stars, who plays his club football in Italy. We're talking briefly about whether he may move or stay in Italy. But before that, Emmanuel, tell me the World Cup. Now, now that there seems to be a different sense, a lot of supporters at the stadium that day, we are scoring again, new faces, the spirit seems to be back. Is this something that could make us hope for the World Cup? That was, that was all we were yelling for because uh, after the World Cup 2014, uh, you see the hula balloons out there and what happened and all the supporters were a bit uh, angry with us. Uh, Not a bit I, angry, they were, very, they were angry. very angry. I was one of the players who were out from there going to radio stations, TV stations, to beg them for support. But thankfully, um, they are back to support the team. What I saw at Kumasi was wonderful. I think we, the players, need to build on that and let the, play, uh, the supporters come back to the stadium as well. So, uh, concerning the World Cup, I think um, Egypt is living now. Yeah. And, uh, um, I don't want us to be doing the mathematical, mathematical way, where yeah. you say Egypt have to draw here, then you have to win there. I just want us to concentrate on our four games. When we win one and Egypt slipped, then we say, thank you, you slip, we are going. When they win all their games and we slip, then we congratulate them. So we have to just focus on our four games. So on your screen at the moment was that game involving the Black Stars and Ethiopia. It was an African Cup of Nations qualifier played in Komase where you had new boys, boys Rafael Jumana, a couple of others playing. You saw the Black Stars technical bench a while ago when Ebenezer Ofori had that screamer. I could see Coach Apia saying, wow. I'm sure anyone would have said wow to that I said goal. it myself. But I knew he scored said goal, so I wasn't too surprised. Okay, let's talk about you, club football. You've been in Italy for how long? Uh, six and a half, seven. Aye, time flies, eh? Yeah. I know there was a period that every day we would, or every season we would hear that you may go to Stoke. You were linked with Stoke for a long time. Are we likely to hear such news this, this window? Once the window is open, the rumors were still coming out. But in every rumor, they said there's a bit of truth. And uh, there were one or two instances I was close to s certain clubs, but most of the deaths couldn't go through. Let's talk about what happened in those days when you were really linked with clubs like Stoke. I think there was another in the EPL and it didn't happen. Uh, what happened in those periods? I'll tell you the truth. I signed a mandate for maybe the wrong agents and it really cost me. Okay, what do you mean by you signed the, the mandate for the wrong agent? Maybe the one I signed the mandate for is not having anything in, in hand and you know he will come to Italy, sit with you, know how they are worker, talk, okay, you say, okay, let me give him the chance. Then after you will not hear anything. Then later you will hear the one who is holding the, 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 the offer, you couldn't sign anything for him and for him to go and share Maybe the percentage with any agents. I don't think he will work like that. So, are you still with the same agents? Yeah, I, I have worked with one agent more than four years now. And another agent with with, with the same mandate, or uh, with the, with the person who maybe see, this, was the wrong agent? These agents work together. So uh, maybe, uh, for example, I can have a club. You are an agent. Then I will tell you, uh, maybe Mr. A is your player, mm -hmm. but I have a club for Mr. A. So give me mandate. Okay. Then the agent will sign a mandate for the, uh, the other agent. Then he has to go and do the negotiations with the club. So then after, they know how to do their percentages. That is 
So what it means is that in this instance, your agent becomes the middleman? Something like that, yeah. Okay. And after maybe the, this one will talk to the club and the thing that he got the offer, then he will come and meet my agent. Then they will go to my club. Then they will talk to the club about the transfer fees. Then from that, they will come to the player for your salaries and the bonuses. So what's been the problem so far with all the clubs that you were linked with? One was, uh, I signed a, a mandate for, for, for an agent. Mm. And um, the one who was having the proper deal, I didn't sign a mandate for him. That means uh, if this guy brought the, the, the offer, I'm working with three parties, but he wanted to go with my agent only, and I have signed a mandate for another agent. That means he doesn't want to work with that. Is there a chance that you may move from Italy this summer? I think I have done my part. Um, I have been there for six, seven years. I played more than, I think, 200 games. And more than 200? Yeah. If more than 200, I'm getting closer to 200. And I need fresh challenges in my life. Uh, and if an offer comes and I, I'm 100% with it, I will go for the challenges. Has there been some offers now? I'm on my holidays. I leave everything in the hands of my agent. People are on holidays, but with no players I communicate, who are moving. I communicate with my agent every blessing. What day. has he been saying? Have you positive had offers? Stuff. Okay, offers Very from, from England again? Likely. Some are from there. Okay, so, so imagine you decide to leave. Would you, would you be in Italy again or, or get out of Italy? I love Italian football. I've been there now. I know everything about the country now. I feel comfortable in the country. I just need fresh challenges. It doesn't matter where it is, but I respect my contract with Wittenis. Or do I need the fresh challenges? So if it comes either in Italy or outside, I will grab that opportunity. What clubs have reached your agent so far? What are some of the clubs? You don't have to mention every, every club. Some three, two. I guess in two, two weeks' time, I can tell you 100% this is what is happening in my I, I, I don't need 100% regarding exactly where you're going, but what are some of the clubs that have shown interest in you? Some are from China, some are from uh, the Arab countries, some are from England, and, and some Italian clubs. So, if you're going to move beyond the challenges, what are some of the factors that would influence your decision to move? Playing time. One. And of course... The thing is very important as well. The, the, the play time, right? The contract. The contract. The, the contract is just a piece of paper. Are we talking about yeah, but the money? Yeah, there is some waste inside on the contract. So that is very important. We are talking well. about the money. Yeah, it's, it's very important as well. I but, think if you're. But I'm I'm I, I'm looking after the playing time. If you're looking at the money, then China. I said it's very important, but I'm looking for playing time. Have you have have you had any offer from China? Yes. Now or previously? Previously. And now. Now, uh, you are talking to one or two, you will see what will happen in two or three weeks time. In China? Yeah, uh, uh, some club there. In China? Yeah. You mentioned the Arab countries, exactly what? Are we talking about Dubai or where? Uh, or du Qatar? Dubai and Qatar. Okay, so you have had some offers But you know, I don't want to be specific, because, uh, you know, football, why the uh, window openings like this, the rumors are too much, and I just want to be, have something hand concrete then I can open up. But right now, what I'm hearing from my agent is what I'm telling you, but it's not yet confirmed. There okay. are a couple of agents calling him, sending him emails, and he's dealing with it. So, beyond Italian football, which other country or style of play do you think would really suit you? EPL, England. EPL? Yeah. So given you had an opportunity, or you had offers from EPL, from China, and Arab... I will grab the EPL without thinking. Why? I love the league and I want to, I want to shake, showcase my talent there as well before. What is it about the EPL that makes players really, really interested in it? I think one, the media and the supporters make the game lovely. And um, it's, I think it's every player's dream to be there. Now you have your role models, always all of them have played there. Oh, so who are your role models? Obviously you have to know my Lesian is one. And Frank Lampard is one as well, because I love players who go behind defenders and score goals. I'm, 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 I'm type of player like that, and I'm learning from this. Right now, even I'm trying to learn a bit from Ramsey as well, 
that's not player. <laughs> he gets injury by training. No, not water. about the injury, but the way, like when is the game, the way he, go, he goes forward. You see the goal he scored against uh, uh, Chelsea. Well, I don't watch that team anymore. I won't know. Oh, you've run away. I w I don't watch that team anymore. All right. I so won't know. I'm I'm learning a bit from them, and I want to improve a lot. I have, I have, I have, I'm now an average player, but I, I have more room to, to improve, so. Okay, so on your screen at the moment, which game was this? I may need a little help, but it was uh, against Guinea. It was against Guinea. 2012. 2012, when you scored. Was it a Nations Cup or? Yeah, it was a Nations Cup. Uh, I think uh, group, Guinea, group stage. Guinea was Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, 2012. 2012. Yeah. Group, group game? Yeah. yeah group I see. Game. Was, was that the last time you scored for the Black Stars? No. Uh, my last goal was in Tamale. In Tamale? Yeah, yeah. against Togo. Oh, yeah. For I, I, that day I captained the team because the was it wasn't 2014, there. For the 2014 World Cup or after that? No, I think it was qualified. No, for after the 2014. So it was 2015 World Cup qualifier? No, African Cup qualifier against Togo. Okay. Yeah. For the Equatorial Guinea tournament? Yeah. That was the last time you scored. Yeah, I scored. Yeah. What happened to all your goals? They've been drying up. No, um, after, from there I haven't been playing most of the games in the national team, uh, so uh, the opportunities wasn't that great for me to be scoring. Do you ever sit back, look at yourself and wonder why maybe you're not playing as you used to be for the national team? Um, it's every uh, coach's decision. I have to respect the coach's so decision. Is it, is but it whenever just about I the get coach? even like 10 minutes, uh, I have to I have to prove him wrong. Is it just the coaches or maybe something about you that you think I may need to improve this? Of course, every footballer needs to improve. Um, I think uh, at first I have uh, I was someone who goes forward a lot. And uh, depends on the formation the coach is playing. Mm. Uh, because I can set an example in my club side. Uh, at times we play four three three or three five two, and I play the right side of midfield and any. Any cross or any boss behind, it's my job to be in the box. So I was having that philosophy a bit. Uh, at the national team, we came to a time we play with two defenders. And moving inside the box like this, I, maybe I will leave one of the midfielders who will struggle a bit. But I've really changed because I, I met a coach who we play like typical 4 4 2 and I have to stay. Like this year, our coach, he played 4 4 2 with Denise. I played like 30 games out of 38 matches. And I play all the games, so I think I've, I've changed from going too much forward. Uh, I think that one too cost me a bit. In the national team? In the national team. So how easy or difficult is it for you to switch formations? You play specifically this formation a lot in your club, then you come to the national team and you're, you're used differently. Uh, so I have to be clever to, to, to adjust to both. How difficult is it? It's not that too difficult because even if you in the Denise, in the game you can change formation like three times and you uh, you get too used to it because we do tactical play with it on training grounds and it, it makes it so easy. Once you turn to the coach and say switch to this, you have to be, you have to act fast and switch to it. It's not that difficult, but you have to just be focused. How many goals did you score or have you scored so far with your club? Um, I think like twelve. 12 goals and not, 6... Uh, no, this year or the whole Not this season? year. The, the whole period that you've been there. Yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, like 8 assists, I don't know. But but this uh, year, how many goals? Did no, you score year, any goal this, this year? year? That's, the, that's my worst... We we'll say not my worst year. I have made 4 assists but 0 goal. Why? What's happened? That's why I said I said we switch formation a bit. So um, it's, it's it's just down to the formation. Yeah, I can't I can't I can't I can't go too much forward. In the some of the games, uh, I, I need to score, but I will just give assist. And when the team wins, that is important. Although you have to score as well. Okay, if you just join me, this is Spotlight with me, Veronica Come. This afternoon, I'm speaking or I'm hosting the Black Stars midfielder Emmanuel Adman Beruk, who plays in Italy. You heard it here first. He's got a lot of offers, and just maybe for the first time, he leaves. Italy or he stays Italy but with another club. I saw my producer showing earlier the under 20 World Cup in Egypt. I know he truly wants us to talk about it but we should be wrapping up soon. The England are champions, the current champions. 
Did you follow that competition? I think I watched only one game. Uh, I, the, it, uh, I think it, Italy against um, one one. If you didn't watch the that. finals, you missed. No, the it was a beautiful game, end-to-end -end action. It was a, a, a reminder for the 2009 oh, we Ghana. Suffered, we suffered a lot. I was, you, 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 you played you against on. Brazil and turned against 11 on the 27th minute of FESA. You can imagine how the likes of Diego Costa, uh, Douglas Costa. <laughs> Not Alex, Diego Costa. <laughs> Douglas Costa. You wish. <laughs> yeah, Tex Roma Costa. Tex Tex yeah. One who moved from uh, Shaka Donetsk to China. It was a beautiful team. Uh, playing with six players, 10 against 11, it was, was, it was headache. So you can't compare this game to ours. Yeah, I know how, how you're going to say that <laughs> because you're talking about Ghana. But yeah, uh, but we there won, you have we won it. all our games. So there you have it on your screen. The satellites won all their games, went to the finals, met Brazil, played with 10 players, somehow pushed it to penalties, and they won that game. And you scored a final, final one? Yeah. That was, that was breathtaking. Yeah, yeah. Do you look I was back? sweating. <laughs> I know everybody was sweating. Do, do you look back and think, what a tournament we had? Yes, yeah, I have all the games, the, the, the CDs at home. Uh, at times, I don't like going out. Uh, that much, so I'll be home watching some of the games, all my uh, Kuma Wood movies. <laughs> so when you watch those <laughs> games, what memories or what comes to mind? Uh, it's, it's good memories. Um, I remember. I, I will give you one secret today. Tell me. Why was the last penalty? You know, I, I turned on my left and my right. There was David here, and there was um, Upoku Ajima the other side. So I told them, "You are professionals." <laughs> You can go and take it. Even if something happens, you can leave Egypt and go to your class. I mean, I have to come to Akran and move to Asante Kotoko. That time, I would drive with the road and they would cut off my head. But they were afraid. Uh, I gathered the courage and I went and thank God I made it for the... But nation. you were sweating. Yeah, I sweated. I sweat a lot. And like it was... Like seriously. After I picked the ball, that's where I gathered the courage. When I was going, my mind was like... Seriously, I'm going for Ghana for night. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, after the final kick, after that goal, how was the feeling? Can you remember? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't remember what happened. I was just running like a crazy guy. But one thing, my brother was in the stands, so I wanted to run to him. But you know, with the place, I couldn't and they grabbed me. It was, it was a good memory. I see. Do you look back and wonder why Ghana has not made such impressions again after, after this particular win? Uh, yeah, it's sad. Uh, our, our team, I think we were, we were together for long. Uh, we were together for so long. The same team who played in Africa is the same team who played for the, for World, the World Cup. Cup. Uh, so we, uh, we need like the under 17 right now. They did very well in the, in the, in the Africa Cup. If we can keep the team, you can keep all the players, but at least half of the team. A core of the team should be and they move it. Like how they move our team from the under 20 World Cup to the 2010 Africa yeah, Cup of Nations, where we, we, we lost painfully 1-0 against Egypt on the finals. Emmanuel, I have to let you go. Can we continue this another time? Say yes. I'm always here. Yes, okay. Thank you for coming through. So this is where I have to wrap up. This is where I have to draw today's curtain on yet another edition of Spotlight. My guest has been Emmanuel Ajman Bedou. He plays for the NACI in Italy and a midfielder with the Black Stars. My name is Veronica Kome. I hope you had a good program. Do have a good day and remember to dream on. It doesn't cost a thing. Hey, you be a asking that they will race in the tomb. Now, Baba movie star can see the Kujon cancel a win. A Jacob Mark Brown. Now, the end of the Kumu stars are no, no, the at Wedi, at Taji, at Dende, and the Benfim production or refrain. Producers of Michia and Tema, Radekasa, Asantia Mamre, a Hebrew New York country, a confirmer warrior, Mamisa White, sort of me, Ninsu Irime, the year economy, the year bread of dough, year in Tubia, and not Sini Ahuru Bibria, Untum Budi. Saya Sini Bido, Senya Bido, Eba Obenya Botel. Mwateto, Mwadwetwa movie, series, music video, ino ni advert a horo, mawosa baba ya star, mubiara ate onka. Seyubia, abo nyo, maripo mwetwa music video kama kama mwa. Faba dan, enje Ben Films Production. Nso, nso la wapo de, wa aso ko TV, de nwa reti outsource, obotun da abe dan, enje Ben Films Production. Components a horo, wapo de, wa aji ko TV, de nwa yu asi na ati wanka. Obotun da abe dan, enje Ben Films Production. Ibuchwa wa advert, ni kama kama, nye datu TV, de mubiara ate onka. Sewe de nareye, outdoor, 
engagement party biara na de yi biara yen wo tun da bada and the benefit production yen e chia kwa wo chia pache fire service for one to hop telephone number 0244451428 another 0269449948 another 0201170451 Papa te voy a